So we're going to add 540 and 61. First, we'll write out the bigger number, 540, and then write down 61 underneath. And join the straight line, and don't forget to put your plus sign. So we're going to add starting from the ones column, 0 add 1, that's 1, and 4 add 6, is 10, so we'll write 0 and carry 1 over here, that's the hundreds column, and then we're going to add down, 5 and 1 definitely will give us 6. So when we add 540 and 61, we get 601. How many children can each have 10p out of £3.50? So the first thing you need to do is to change this £3.50 to pennies. Okay? And then to change this number to pennies, you have to multiply £3.50. Okay? Multiply by 100. And you're going to get 350 pennies. And to figure out how many children can each have 10p from this amount, you simply divide 350 by 10. So you do 350p divided by 10 pennies. Of course, this is going to give you 35. So this represents the number of children that can each have 10p from this amount. Write in millimeters the length of a line 10 times as long as the line below. Now, because we're dealing in millimeters and the question here is in centimeters, we've got to change the centimeters to millimeters. Already, you do know that 10 millimeters is the same thing as 1 centimeters. So, if we've got to change 8 centimeters to millimeters, all I've got to do is to multiply by 10. So, that's going to give me 80 millimeters. So, this is the same thing as 80 millimeters. And now we want to figure out the length of the line 10 times as long as 80 millimeters. All you got to do is to multiply 10 times 80 millimeters. And of course, that's easy. That's going to be 800 millimeters. So, this is the answer we want to get. In this question, we've got to add this. Seven pound and five ten pennies plus seven penny. How much are we going to get in pounds sterling? Now, what we've got to do is write out this, of course, uh, which of course is seven pound anyway, is done and add it to five ten piece. That's like saying five times ten, or you say ten times ten plus ten plus ten to five places. But I think it's easier for me to do five times ten, okay, and then plus seven p. All right, remember this is in P's anyway. So if you work this out, it's going to be seven pound plus 50p and 7p. So I just want to show you how we can add this using the column addition. Okay, so this is seven pound. Okay, I put that in zero, zero. And then 50p here. And then, of course, you have 7p. So we're going to add up all the amounts. Starting from, make sure you line up the decimal point first. Okay, make sure they're all lined up. And then you add your ones, 0, 0, and 7. It's gonna, of course, it's, you did an addition here. So that's going to be 7. And 0, add 5. That's 5. Add a nothing. That's going to be 5. And then, of course, decimal point is already there, lined up. And then 7, add nothing. We get uh, 7. So what we're going to have here is going to be 7 pound. 57. In this question, we need to find the time difference from 9.05 a.m. to 10.25 a.m. Was the, was the measurement the distance in minutes? I mean, not the distance, but the time range. Well, there are a couple of ways you may want to do this, but for the purpose of this explanation of this video, I just want to use a time series, a timeline to help us with that. And the timeline looks like you have a line just drawn this way, and on the either side of it is one of the time which is in 9.05 a.m. And on the extreme end is the other time which is 
25 a.m. Okay, good. So this is the time here, and this is the time here also. The time difference a minute from this point here, 9:05 to 10:25 a.m. Okay. Now I'm going to use, like I said, this is a time series. Now to do this, I would like to work out, move this time to the nearest hour, and uh, that's going to be something close to here. And this time here is definitely 10. Okay, 10 a.m. That's nearest hour, and the time difference range to five minutes. So we have the the time range here is fifty five minutes, and then from the nearest hour ten to ten twenty five. I think that's going to be twenty five under that twenty five minutes. So now the time range from 9.05 to 10.25 will be 55 minutes plus 25 minutes. That's going to give you um, definitely 80 minutes when you add up the time together. And we come here and put in the right answer as 80 minutes. How many times larger is 900 than 9? Well, what we've got to do is to divide 900 by 9. So we have 900 divided by 9. You could divide this mentally, or you could even do this using the Borchetta method. Okay, of course, either way you do, you're going to get 100 as your answer. 900 by 9 gives you 100. How many times greater is 5 6 of 30 than 1 6 of 30? So what you need to do is to work out the, the answer for 5 6 of 30 and then the answer for 1 6 of 30 and then the result you get, you subtract both. Okay? So let's work out with the very first one. 5 6 of 30. So if I work this out, 5 6 of 30, the word of simply means times. So 5 6 of 30. And um, to solve this, um, I'm going to solve it with a very, very simple method. I'm going to divide 30 by 6. That's 30 divided by 6. I'm going to get 5. And this 5, we multiply this 5 on the top number here. That's 5 times 5. That's going to give us 25. So in other words, if you multiply 5 of 30, you get 25. So the next thing I'm going to do is also work out what is 1 6 of 30. So if I do the same like I did the first, 1 6 of 30. Now, what I've got to do, again, is to divide 30 by 6. So, I'll do 30 divide 6. We get 5. And this 5 will multiply the top numerator number. So, it's going to be 5 times 1. And that's going to give you 5. So, now, since we know the result for this one and then this one, which is 25 and 5, then we're going to do subtraction to find how many times greater. So we do 25, there's as 25 here, take away this 5, and uh, we're going to get um, 20. So 20 is a result which we are looking out for. We have a quiz show, um, cartoon the night, uh, news, and these are the time, okay? Now, question is, how, how, many, how many minutes longer is a quiz show than the cartoon? The cartoon is 12.15 and the quiz show is 11.30. Again, uh, to find the time um, longer, a minute, I'm going to use the time timeline. And uh, of course, this is um, a timeline for uh, the quiz show. This is the quiz show. The quiz show. The time is um, 11.30. And for the cartoon here, the time is uh, 12.15. So I just want to work out the time difference, how much longer from 11.30 to 12.15. Now, one of the easiest ways for me to work again is to work this out the distance from here, 11.30, to the nearest hour. And the nearest hour is about 12. Okay, 12.00, zero, zero. and that's about 30 minutes difference. 
and uh, also from 12 to 12 15 the difference is about 15 minutes so now we're going to add up the time difference i mean the times range 30 and 15 and that's going to give you definitely um 45 minutes this is by how much the the quiz show is longer than the cartoon 45 minutes and now there are 400 pencils in the box one eight of them are blue so one eight of them are blue so one eight of 400 are blue and the remainder is red how many were there of each color so for blue we could one eight of 400 uh that's pretty easy you do 400 divided by eight uh you're gonna work it this way definitely you do 400 divided by eight uh that's 50 and 50 we we'll multiply this top one number that's 50 times one that's uh 50. so definitely there are 50 blues okay and to figure out how many red is there are um you need to subtract this 50 from 400 and uh, one way to do that is to do 400 take away 50 of course it's easy to see zero as take a zero 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 take away five is not possible so it, you go to the next number borrow one here yeah? so there's three i mean yeah and then put one here that's 10 10 take away five you get five and then of course the rest here is three take away nothing is three so we have three hundred and fifty red pencils how many times larger is 220 than 22 so what we need to do is to divide 220 by 22 220 you divide that by 22 uh, if you divide this definitely you see that this is going to give you obviously it's going to be 10 okay 220 divided by 22 we give you 10 so we go to the next question so in this question we're going to add the largest of this amount to the smallest so it's easy to see that uh, the smallest number here is 2 pound 10 and the smallest number is 99 pennies so we're going to add both numbers so we'll write it 2 pound 10 and uh, 99 p's okay i'm going to draw a line underneath like this and i put the plus sign so make sure you line up the decimal point and then we're going to add the numbers 0 add 9 from the far right 0 add 9 is 9 and 1 add 9 is 10 so you write down 0 and then carry 1 over to the pound spot so 1 add 2 3 add nothing so you have three so what you're gonna get here is uh, three pound zero nine here um three notebooks cost 50p so what would it cost of nine that's nine notebooks um what we need to do is to try to write out a statement okay first three notebooks so three notebook cost um uh the cost um fifty p and then we want to know the cost of nine notebooks okay so what we need to do is um if you look at this question variable you find that this is like a problem on direct uh, proportion so what we what we can do is uh to move from three to nine we definitely have to multiply by three because three times three gives you nine and whatever number you multiply on the left you're also going to do also on the right so you're going to multiply on the right side also by three so if we work this out so nine notebook will cost 50p times three that's 150p of course if you really want to write this in terms of pounds so that's going to be one pound fifty or you might just as well leave it in pennies 150 pennies if one third of a number is 18 what 
is the number. Well, there are a couple of ways you might want to solve this, but I can show you one way we can do this. Uh, because we do, we are trying to find the number, right? So I might just call the number a question mark. So taking the first part of the statement says one third of a number. Okay, the word of simply means times. So let's call that number. I don't know what it is. Let me call it question mark. Is um eighteen. So what's gonna be that number? Well, one of the easiest things you could do. Okay, let me share this blue. Okay, good. So what we could do to find the missing number. Is to multiply this 3 and 18 to get that number. So the missing number definitely has to be you multiply 18 by this 3, the bottom fraction number. So that's going to be 18 times 3. Definitely, if you multiply this, you're going to get 54. So the missing number is going to be 54. Now we have. Uh, so measurement question, how much longer in millimeters is the line X? Okay, this is line X. Okay, you can see that. And larger than line Y. Now we got to be a bit, a bit careful just to read up the values very well. Okay, let's try see the measurement for Y. Oh, let's start with X first. Now the measurement for X starts from 10. You can see that and then up to I think here is about 65 so to find the measurement of that for X so X is gonna be definitely 65 you can see the measurement here 65 take away 10 so 65 take away 10 that's gonna be 55 of course it's in millimeters anyway and then for Y okay the Y is the one on the bottom the measurement starts from here and if you read carefully, you can see that this is 5 millimeters. Okay, and then here is about 55. So we're going to do 55, okay? The larger ticket with the smaller, which is 5. So 55, take away 5. And of course, you can see this is going to be 50. Again, no, both measurements are in millimeters. So how much longer is line X and Y? What you need to do simply is to say, uh, you do 55, take away 50, we can see that's going to give us 5. And in fact, it's going to be 5 millimeters anyway. So the, the answer is going to be 5 millimeters. And now we need to write 80 centimeters equivalent in millimeters. One thing to remember is this. 10 millimeters is the same thing as one centimeter. Okay, this is the conversion between millimeters and centimeters. So if we have 18 centimeters here and you need to work out the equivalent in millimeters, what you've got to do is simply multiply by 10. So if you multiply 10 by 18, you get 180 millimeter. So the equivalent of 18 centimeters in millimeters is 180 millimeters. How many of 20 pieces is the same as 3 pounds? Well, it's, I think it's going to be definitely going to be 15. Yeah, because if you multiply 15 by 20, okay, you, could, you know that's going to give us 300 anyway, 200 pennies, because this is in pennies. And that's the same thing as three pound. So that means the result we're looking for uh, is 15. So we can write it in numbers or we can also write it in words. I think I'm going to write them in words. So we have uh, 15, 20 piece. Which number is nine times larger than seven? All you've got to do is to multiply 7 by 9, and that's going to be 63. So 63 is a number 9 times larger than 7. Find the cost of 150 centimeters of a material at 80 p a meter. The key word here is a meter, and that's the, the cost of the length of a material. So what we need to do is, you can see that here, this measurement is in centimeters. So I need to change this uh, centimeters to meters, okay? 
very very interesting you got to change this to meters now of course you do remember that a hundred centimeters is equivalent to one meters so definitely uh, 150 centimeter was it gonna be in meters that's okay 1.5 meters so so we're gonna do is now so we know uh, so if you have uh, for one meter you'll get for ATP so 1.5 meters you simply multiply this 80 times 1.5 okay 80 times 1.5 80 times 1.5 that's going to give you okay let's do my piece of side working 80 times 15 i'll just ignore the decimal point okay and try to work out first and then let's put my decimal point 5 times 0 is 0 and 5 times 8 is 40 and then I put it there right under here and then 1 times 0 is 0 and 1 times 8 is 8 and for 0 0 12 I need to figure out where to put a decimal point because I have one digit after my decimal point here. So definitely I'll have to put my decimal point here where I have one digit after decimal point. So that's going to give me 120. 120p. Which is the same thing as pound twenty. Now Jacob buys four DVDs at £9 each. So how much change has he got from £50 notes? Okay, so one DVD uh, costs about nine pound because we have we know that this is nine pound each, and then if he's gonna buy four DVDs, okay, if buy four DVDs, he's definitely gonna have nine times five and nine times four rather nine times four. That's gonna be thirty six pound. Okay, so that's the cost for four DVDs. Now, if he's gonna get some change, now change is the amount of money you get. Uh, when you, the money pays over at, over the actual amount the the the, I, the item cost, okay, that, the money left over. So to get a change, we're going to say to get a change now. We need to we need to to get a change, and we've got to sub, the, the subtract thirty six from fifty. So fifty pound take away thirty six pound. That's going to give us about. Um, 14 pounds so 14 pounds is gonna be the change he gets ravi is 90 centimeter tall and grace is one and a half times his height so how tall is grace okay ravi is 90 centimeters tall and grace is one and a half so grace definitely has to be one and a half times the height of um, Ravi, which is a 90. So we have a mixed number multiplying a whole number. So we need to first to solve this, you need to change this mixed number to the top heavy fraction. And uh, to do that, you multiply 2 times 1 is 2 and add on this 1, that's 3, that's going to be 3, 2 times 90. Now, of course, you could multiply 3 and 90 to get 270 and then have it. That's one way, or you could do 90 divided by 2, and the answer you get multiplied by 3. I think I'd like to use that method. So what I'm going to do is to say uh, this 90 divided by 2, So because I'm trying to get some space, 90 divided by 2, this 90 here divided by 2, I get 45. And this 45 will multiply this 3. Okay, 45 multiplied by this 3 will give me the height for grace. And that's definitely 3 times 5 is 15, carry 1. And 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1, 1, 3. That's 30, 135. So that's going to be the height. The height for grace definitely will have to be 135 centimeters. Remember, this is centimeters, not meters, okay? Harry has pound fifty. Jessica has 85p less than Harry. So how much has Jessica? Well, this is a case of uh, subtraction. So what we need to do is do one pound fifty and subtract eighty five p from that. Okay. Now first, make sure you line up your decimal point and zero to five. Well, remember this is subtraction. Zero to five is not possible. So you go to the next number and five 
and then go to the next number and also borrow it from here. So if you take borrow from one here, well zero, you bring it here fifteen, and then borrow one from fifteen. What's left here is fourteen, and then come here ten. So ten take away five. Uh, ten take away five is gonna be five, and then you have fourteen here. So fourteen take away eight, you get six. Yeah, six. And then, of course, zero to go with nothing is zero. So, how much has Jessica? 65p. Now we have uh, a kind of sequence here. Uh, we've got to write the missing number in it, in the sequence. Two, the, you can see 2150, 2100, 2050. Now, looking at the numbers, you could immediately see that this number is going down by 50. You can notice that. So the next numbers going down 50 using the same pattern is going to be 2000. And they see go down by another 50. That'll give you 1950. That's 1950. Now we have 4 pounds 16 divided by 4. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use the boss shelter method. I'm going to draw this right quickly. Uh, the bigger number goes inside this ball shuttle, 4.16. 4 and then you have 4 up here. Make sure you line up the decimal points. Very important, okay? So let's go. 4 into how many lots of 4 can go in 4 one time? Good. Next, how many four lots of 4 can go in 1? Well, not really possible. So you're going to put a 0 here. And move this 1 to the next. Uh, that's the 1. So you have 16. So how many lots of 4 can go in 16? Definitely it will be 4. So the result we're going to get is actually going to be 1 pound for a penny. A half kilogram costs 10p. Okay, a half kilogram costs 10p. Okay, so what's the cost of 5 kilogram? Okay. What's the cost of 5 kilogram? Now, carefully notice something. To move from half kilogram to 5, you have to multiply this half by 10. Because half of half times 10, you get 5. So remember, whatever you multiply on the left side, you do the same on the right. So you're going to multiply here also by 10. So 10p times 10, you get 100p which is the same thing as one pound, okay? So you have one pound. How many times smaller is 54 than 540? Okay, what you need to do is to divide 540 by 54. Of course, if you divide this, you're gonna get 10. So it's 10 times smaller. This clock is 20 minutes slow. R write the correct time in digital form using AM or PM. So this is the current time, but actually it's slow by 20 minutes. To find the correct time, we need to increase this time, okay, using the minute hand, move it 20 minutes um, correctly upwards to get the correct time because, it's, because right now it's slow by 20 minutes. So we have to push it up by 20 minutes to get the correct time. So we have to go this way, move in the minute hand, 5, 10, 15, 20. So this is the correct time. And so we have to write this time in AM or PM. Uh, so we can write this as um, 3 or 5. Okay. 3 or 5. Uh, it could be AM or PM, depending what time i mean morning or evening but i'm going to use am okay someone else can use pm all right next question what is the distance around this rectangle so uh we need to work at the distance around this rectangle now because this is a rectangle we know the opposite parallel sides are always equal uh, 40 here so is 40 here and here 20 has to be 20 so i just have to write here 20 just to help me work out 
um, and then up here we have 40 because here is 40. So if I have to work out the perimeter, I will need to add up all the distance round about it. That's the distance round about it. So we have 40 plus 40, uh, this and this, and then I'm going to add 20 and 20. And if I add this together, I can see that 40 and 40 is 80 plus 20, that's 100 plus 100. 20 you get 120 again all measurements are in millimeters so uh the distance round is 120 uh, millimeters